So right here we have the, you know, the main river is wide and shallow, which not an ideal spot to find a brown shot specifically, but on this side, which might be overlooked, is just kind of a little narrow strip where it gets a little bit deeper under these trees and up by the bank. That's more ideal brown trout territory than anywhere you'll find out here. We're gonna try to flip this in here and pull it through some of the holes. Right there, right there. Oh, did you see the size of that fish? If you guys look at any of the Facebook groups, Facebook pages, pages like ours, Idaho Master Angler, there'll be questions on there with people wondering, how do you fish the Boise River in the summer? It can be a little intimidating. The river's still flowing at around 600, 650, and so it might feel a little swift. The river can be a little intimidating because you're like, where do I even begin? A lot of people will fish at the bridges where fish are stocked, which, yeah, you can catch fish there, absolutely, but that's not where I'm gonna target. If you try a few of these tips that I think you'll, uh, I think you'll get on some fish. First of all, here's what I use almost always in the summer. This is a Rapala SR5, which SR means shad wrap, five is the size. This will float until you pull on it, give it some tension. As soon as you have tension, this thing will dive down. I think it's rated, yeah, four to nine feet. I want it bumping bottom. I will mostly cast downstream. There'll be times where I'll cast uh, upstream or, or across, across for sure but I like fishing downstream, I can control the rapala more. If I'm fishing upstream, it's a race between me and the rapala to see who can get, see how I can even reel it in. It's just moving so quick. Here's my rapala right here. I have six pound mono on there. You can use, I know guys use braid. I've always used six pound mono. It's worked great for me. The, the key is the, the right diameter so this still dives and runs correctly. If it's not hitting bottom, or if it's kind of veering off to one side, you might have too thick a line. If it's too thin, obviously you're gonna break off. There's some big trout in here. So SR5 Rapala, crawdad color, six pound mono. I got my wading shoes. I got my dry bag. If you're a little worried about the rapids or the, the water still is dry bag, will float me down the river. Most spots I can touch, but every once in a while I'll, I'll, I'll step into a hole and I'll, I'll go deeper than I want. And this thing will keep me buoyant. Also, you can wear a life jacket. There you go, what I'm looking for on sunny days, I'm looking for deeper spots in the river that aren't that big. I always say like kitchen table size holes that have some depth, that have a little bit of flow, that have some shade, especially on a sunny day like today. So anyways, I hope you uh, will enjoy this video. Hope he gives you a few pointers on how to fish the Boise River, specifically in the summer right in town. This is my first time fishing this stretch of river this summer and things have changed from the big runoff we had. So doing a lot of walking. Instead of wasting time and unproductive areas. I'm walking the river looking for little dark spots in the river which would tell me there's some depth there. All right, let me show you why I'm using this color right here. This is what I, I see in the river. And that's kind of our, one of our food sources for the bigger trout. So when we look at the color, those are pretty close. You can see why they would chase that. Right there, right there, oh! Did you see the size of that fish? That was a huge brown. And I lost him. Right here. Right in this little corner. He hammered it, got in the current, and lost him. I mean, that's the fish we came for. That was a, I'm in an overlooked spot for sure. Look at this. Under these trees, kind of a, in a spot maybe you wouldn't normally fish, but I'm telling you that's where they are. Wow, guys, that thing hit on top of the water. It didn't even start reeling. I never even reeled once. It landed on top of the water and this thing came up and grabbed it. And then I saw splashing. I mean, it feels pretty heavy. I don't even know what it is. It's a brown. You're not in this. Oh, there he goes. I mean, I was gonna let him go, but I uh, would have liked to shown you a little bit closer what that fish was. Not a very big brown, maybe 15, 16 inches. I cast out there, hits the water. I haven't even reeled yet, and the thing slams on top water. So, not doing very good landing fish today.
Oh, right there. That's a big fish. That's a big fish. This is a nice, deep, good moving current right here. Not too fast, not too slow. Got some good depth. And there's just been a lot of fish right here in this. Oh, it's still going. Boy, it's a powerful fish. Gorgeous fish. Let's see if we can land them. Try to stay out of the current. All right, you ready? Hey, 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 hey. And then that, there we go. There he is, look at that color. That's a nice fish. Fat, fat, healthy fish. Yeah, you're going. There we go. You can just feel when you run across the river. I'm not bouncing as many rocks, so I know it's a little bit deeper. Fish feel a little safer from all the predators, the ospreys. That opposite side there looks more promising for a brown trout underneath the, some of the overhangs there and a little bit of the backwater. Right there. Oh man, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Another, another right on the deep there. He almost jumped over that tree. Oh, I think it's a big brown. Guys, I'm telling you, you get away from the main bridges, get out and walk this river. This is a great time to be fishing. Oh, he is so strong. Look at this. Uh oh, I feel a stick down there. I think he's wrapped on a stick. Oh. Come on over here. Look at that size of this fish. Yeah, there we go. Get up in the shallows. Run up to him. Scoop him. There's a nice fish. The Boise River, although right in town, gets some pressure. If you just get, you know, away from some of the busy stretches, you can land some fish like this. this is a probably 19, 20 inch brown trout. Gorgeous fish. Get back in the water here. Walk the river a little bit and fish the spots that are productive. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So here we go. Let's get a, a release on this big girl. Hey, that's four fish in this stretch right here that we've either had on, four or five, had on or caught or lost. And I think what's special about this stretch, it's a little bit deeper, a little bit wider. Not The current is not as fast. Those fish can hide down away from the osprey. We do have overcast. I think when you have overcast, the fish will be spread out more uh, in the river. And if you have sun, then they're going to be in the, in the deeper holes, especially the brown trout, be in the deeper holes in those little side channels, little small water like I lost that big one. So I'm getting out of here. I'm just running that wrap across. I'm I'm give it a good pop as soon as I cast to get it down there and I want it running deep hey the fish are here and they're and they're pounding it so it's time to swap out some batteries we'll keep moving we're not done yet all right this is uh this is fun I'm trying to get over I think where that fish hit was kind of by that brush pile and that side of the river has got some deeper protected spots where I think some of these big browns might hang out but like it seems to be happening I think they're all over in the in the middle because it's the right depth we got some overcast weather fish are kind of spread out a little more right there right there oh spit it another brown they are spastic when they hit today wow I have lost too many fish. I don't like losing fish. 
where they are hitting it and jumping, which it's cool when they jump, but man, that's how you lose fish. And that's how I've lost most of my fish today is they jump and they are just shaking and I don't know how they do it, but they spit that, that rapala. Right there, right there. Oh, he hit it way back here and hammered it right by my feet and I lost him. All right, I just lost that fish and I'm like, something's up here. I mean, you lose fish when you fish in the river, especially for trout. They go spastic and they shake off. But I had broken a hook on a fish up here, which is the first time it's ever happened with these inline hooks. I buy them on Amazon, so you know, the quality has always been good, but you just never know. When I lost this one here, I'm like, gosh, something's up. And I take a look at my hook. And that one's broke as well. And so I don't know if I got a bad batch of inline hooks. Again, it's never happened to me before. I've always enjoyed, uh, oh, here's the other one right here. So this is what happened up there. That's not gonna work. So out of precaution, cause I have multiple inline hooks here, I'm gonna switch back to a treble, which I don't like using. And I mean, and I just got that big, you know, 20 inch brown on this and I've got, I've got so many fish on these inline hooks, but maybe just maybe I got a bad batch. So I'm going to swap out, put a treble back on and I don't know, keep fishing because I'm losing too many fish in broken hooks that just shouldn't happen. So. Oh, right there. Didn't help that my net broke and I uh, can't get it on. Yeah, yellow rainbow. And this is why I don't like using treble hooks. They always get tangled in the net. And, hey, 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 you're going free. And it says that many more hooks in the fish. And since I'm planning on releasing them all, I don't like There you go. I don't like messing them up, you know? Sorry, my net broke. I mean, here's what I'm doing with my net. I'm tucking it in right here. This part here, I've replaced it a few times, but just surviving. Well, I've been in the river for a few hours and hadn't thought much of the weather. And all of a sudden I noticed, you know, it's getting a little breezy. So I come uh, hop out of the water because my phone's in my dry bag. And it said severe thunderstorm warning. 60 mile per hour winds, hail, lightning. It's about 10 minutes out. Thought about hunkering down and trying to ride it out, but that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. So not as much as I'd love to keep fishing. And it pains me to finally have a day where I can fish and this storm is hitting right in prime time. I think it's the wise move to get out of the river and take shelter. So, oh, I love to get some of these blackberries. All right, appreciate you guys watching. See you later.